Welcome to CAPS 13 News. I'm Cale Chapman. It's been a year since the COVID-19 pandemic hit America, forcing campuses to shut down, including Pittsburgh State University. Now, with the COVID-19 vaccines being given out across the nation, how does Pittsburgh State plan to get back to some kind of normalcy? CAPS 13 reporter Courtney Head has a story. COVID-19 has caused many shutdowns to take place over the course of this last year, Pittsburgh State being one of them. Pittsburgh State is now trying to get back to what campus looked like pre-pandemic. Vaccine clinics on campus, which communication officer Abigail Fern says the way to get back to normal. Strongly encourage all students, faculty, and staff to get vaccinated. This is our quickest path back to normalcy, so we want to make that as convenient as possible. However, there has been no discussion yet on whether or not campus will be going back to normal in the fall. According to Pittsburgh State Registrar's Office, currently 65% of courses will be face-to-face, 15% of courses will be online, and 85% will include some level of in-person instruction. President of the university, Dr. Steve Scott, says the goal is to be back to some kind of normal next semester. Uh, But we're really gearing up to think about how can fall be as normal as possible, and can we be without masks, and can we get back to normal capacities in our classrooms? how successful are we with getting our students vaccinated? I think that's going to be critical for the fall. So lots of decisions to make, don't have any definitive things to say yet, except we're going to do everything possible to be as normal as possible this fall. For CAPS 13 News, I'm Courtney Head. The second dose of COVID-19 vaccines are now available to college students on Pittsburgh State's campus. Crawford County Health Department's second dose of COVID vaccine clinics for Pittsburgh State students will take place on May 21st. The vaccine is free of charge to the students, even those without health insurance. If students can't make it back to campus on May 21st, they can call their local health center and make an appointment or wait until the fall. The clinic will take place from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. with no location set in place yet. Axe Library held an event to support Earth Day. CAPS 13 reporter Jackie Chung has a story. Earth Day is an annual event that supports the environmental protection. On April 21st, X Library is giving out DIY pollinator seeding kits for people. There are seeds of milkweed, soil, and four seed bombs that had been pre-made for people to plant it by themselves. Many people uh, don't know how to connect with sustainability. It feels like it's such a big concept. But if we think about the small things we could do, planting, uh, milkweed, planting other things, the pollinators, that larva of butterfly that our food cycle relies on, those are small steps that we can all take. People that join the event feel that they are happy to take response for the environment. It, this might be a small step that I'm taking for all the destruction that we're doing every day, mm. like deforestation and everything. Uh, planting this small sapling would actually help the environment in a small way. So. Uh, I believe that taking that small step is going to create a change. For the pandemic year, this kind of activity can also be helpful for the people. I think it makes it different, but it also makes it even more important. Uh, As we're having a hard time figuring out uh, how to isolate or how to socially distance, Uh, Many people also want to find a hobby, something they could do. And planting is such, gardening, planting, and everything that comes with it is such a natural fit. It's something that you can do that's very relaxing, helps many people just kind of feel more connected with nature. Jackie Chong from CAP 13. Student organizations on campus are aiming to make a major statement on oppression with a new display. The display, named Tunnel of Oppression, is shining a spotlight on the different types of oppression that all kinds of people face. Student organizations came together, each making their own section for their display based on the types of oppression they deal with. For Stephanie Spitz, showcasing oppression in all its forms is important to understand how to eliminate it. For each of these groups, it was very important for them to showcase those areas of oppression and really fight back against systems of oppression like racism, sexism, transphobia, and things of that nature so that we can break free and move towards an empathetic future. Alpha Gamma Delta are having a new event for connecting members. International Reunion Day will be held on Saturday, April 24th at 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. 
The event will be held online. This is an annual event for Alpha Gamma Delta in the third Saturday of April. The event is to let the alumni and active members have a chance to see each other and reconnect. The Axe Library is an important spot on campus for many students. The library offers many services to the Pittsburgh community, but one such event happens only once a year. The annual grab bag book sale ran for two days on April 19th and 20th. This event is different from other library events because students were able to buy a random bag of books organized by genre for three or four dollars depending on the bundle. The sale aimed to raise funds for library activities like workshops and study nights and give back to students that frequent the library. I mean, library services tries to do this every year. Last year was a little hard to get this done. Uh, and our goal is usually the same. We want to try and engage with the community, make sure our PSU members and community members can get something new to read, just something different. Uh, most of our items are always donations that come from community members. So it's a way to uh, get from the community and give back to others. For more information on library events, visit Gorilla Engage. After the break, we'll take a look at a less than ordinary senior project over at the KTC. Hey Gorilla Nation, this is Stu Height, Chief of Police here at Pittsburgh State. Hope you're off to a great semester and we want to just give you a couple of reminders of how to take care of your valuables. Uh, please don't ever leave them unattended for any length of time at all. We live on a very safe campus and a very safe community, but you can never be too safe. So if you ever need anything, if you have any questions, any concerns, about anything ranging from parking or just safety and security, please feel free to call us anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Go Gorillas! Last week, engineering students at the Tech Center put their senior projects to the test. The students had been preparing rovers since last semester. The students were divided into three groups and began designing their rovers in the fall, then built them this spring. When their rovers were complete, they tested them out in a time trial race against each other. Corbin Russell was pleased with his group's rover. Yeah, we were very happy with how our rover turned out. Uh, we, we knew we were taking a risk with a hydraulic drivetrain because uh, conventionally, most teams will use chains and have a chain-driven rover, um, but we were able to make the hydraulics work, uh, which, which we're really happy with. Made them for the NASA Human Exploration Rover Challenge in Huntsville, Alabama, but the on-site testing part of the competition where PSU would have tested their rovers with other universities was canceled this year. So the PSU groups were left racing each other's projects, where Corbin's group won. The Pitt State Police Department is adding two brand new officers to its ranks. Officer Kritz Katzer gained a psychology degree at PSU. Now he's returning to campus as an officer after being part of the Pittsburgh Police Department for the last five years. Officer Robert Morales Gonzalez is joining the department with 11 years of Army service and three overseas deployments. He currently serves as a military policeman in the Army Reserves. Campus Christians will be losing their maintenance man this summer due to retirement. Don Smith has worked for Campus Christians for 43 years and has finally announced his retirement this summer. He has done many things around Campus Christians' houses and has helped many students in his time at Camp Campus Christians. During his time, he has done many trips and has helped international students by giving them bikes to ride around campus. Campus Christians, I've been here for 43 years, 38 full-time and five part-time. It's gone very fast, but uh, it's been wonderful and I will miss it. Don's final day at Campus Christians will be June 30th. The Campus Christians group will listen to one final message from Don tonight at 6.30 p.m. in Grubbs Hall 109. This year, the American Cancer Society is hosting a walk to bring awareness to cancer. The Walk 40 event is to help fundraise and bring awareness to those who had cancer and to those who are still fighting cancer. All you have to do is walk 40 miles each month and record yourself after or during your walk. To find an event near you, go to cancer.org slash walkrunevents. Coming up in sports, we'll check in with Pitt Baseball as they prepare for their upcoming series against Newman.
I've got a lot of things on my mind. Some things might make you laugh, some things might make you cry, some things might even compromise national security. Why is the internet so obsessed with cats? Hashtag dogs are better. Sorry, but it's true. I can't wait for my trip to Vegas this week and hashtag Friday can't get here fast enough. Have a nice trip. I hate my job. My boss is such a Oh, crap. Pittsburgh State Baseball is looking to gain momentum as the MIAA tournament inches closer. With conference play winding down, the Grillas know they must start playing their best baseball. And they believe that their best can compete with anybody's best. I mean, if we're playing our best against anybody, I mean, we have a shot to beat anybody. Uh, obviously. <laughs> We don't ever want to go into a game knowing that if we play our best baseball, thinking that we can lose. So regardless of who we're playing, if we play our best baseball, we want to put our bets on us. With seeding being very crucial, the Grillas know every game from here on out is of the utmost importance. Uh, we just can't take games off. Uh, Newman, obviously, we dropped a game to them, and we that, that hurts in the standings. Every game counts in the standings. We can't take games off. I mean, if you take a game off against Southern or the rest of the way out, uh, every, every game counts, so if you take one game off, that could be the difference between the two, the three, or the four seeds. So, you've got to play every game like it matters. Even with the Grillas being fourth in the standings, Coach Fornelli believes this team hasn't shown what it is fully capable of yet. You know, the one good thing about it is we haven't peaked as a baseball team yet. We haven't played our best baseball, and, you know, we have only have ten games to start that stuff. But, you know, it's time to get going, time to people to believe in themselves, and, and hopefully finish strong. Coach Fornelli knows, once tournament play starts, anything can happen. You know, the great thing about baseball, if we can find a way to get to Joplin and to, to be one of the top four teams with our uniforms still out for the conference, uh, you never know what might happen. You might get an opportunity to beat them and, and continue to play in a regionals. Speaking of baseball, the Grillas had a three-game series with Newman last week. The Grillas would take the first game of the series with a big day for the offense as Gary McGowan would finish with a two-run homer. Grayson Pinky would also perform well as he would go three for four with three RBIs. Newman would respond in the second game as they would even up the series. Zach, Ho Zach Hargrove would blast a grand slam giving Newman a 5-1 lead in the second inning that they would not relinqu relinquish. Pittsburgh State would go on to defeat Newman in the rubber match with Peyton Ingles pitching seven innings and only giving up one run. The Grillas moved to 14 and 10 in the conference and 19 and 11 overall. Pitt State volleyball wrapped up their season at the spring tournament last weekend. The Grillas would take on the Newman Jets in the first round. They had beaten the Jets the two previous times they had met this season. And after the Grillas took a two-set lead, it looked like PSU was on their way to another win. However, the Jets came roaring back, taking the third and fourth sets. Then scratching out a 15 to 13 win in the decisive fifth set, ending the Grillas season. We'll be right back after the break. not something that you feel until it happens. Most people lose their vision from diseases like macular degeneration and glaucoma, not at birth. Three million Americans have glaucoma and half don't even know it. 11 million people in the United States have macular degeneration. So many eye disorders can be treated if caught early. Make a plan today to get your eyes checked. Visit brightfocus.org to learn more. The annual Pittsburgh State University Awards Ceremony was held April 16th in the Bicknell Center. The Leadership Awards Ceremony featured individual awards like the Golden Gorilla and Outstanding Seniors, as well as organizational awards like Program of the Year and Organization of the Year. Some highlights include the Black Student Association and History Club winning Collaboration of the Year, Natural Ties being awarded the Community Impact Award, Native American Student Association and Students for Violence Prevention being awarded the Presidential Award of Multiculturalism, the Guerrilla Activities Board being awarded Program of the Year and Organization of the Year, and lastly, Aaron Cruz and Christopher Wernemont being named as 2021's Outstanding Seniors. 
And that's our show for the night and our last show for the year. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next spring.